Hey guys, today we're gonna learn the science behind these things, air dusters. Now these things are intended to be used to clean out computers and other equipment using air instead of water, even though these things don't really have air in them. Now most air dusters like this one right here actually contains difluoroethane, which can be compressed into a liquid, as you can hear in the can. However, when it is not pressurized and released, it instantly boils and turns into a gas. In an aerosol container like this, air could be compressed to around 10 bar, or 10 times normal atmospheric pressure. However, that would only mean that the volume of gas that the can could produce would only be 10 times greater than the volume of the can. Now, putting a can under that much pressure would be kind of dangerous. And to keep the air as a liquid, you'd have to keep the can below negative 150 degrees Celsius. So fluorocarbons are definitely the way to go. However, there is one problem with the fluorocarbons used in air dusters, and that is their tendency to be abused. You see, when you inhale these substances, oxygen is prevented from getting to the brain. And this creates dizzy, sort of cloudy feelings, and even hallucinations, which addicts crave. However, this is really dangerous, as people can die from cardiac arrest or the lack of oxygen after inhaling these air dusters. And this is a huge problem in America, where one out of four students my age have tried inhaling air dusters, and many have died as a result of addiction to it. While misusing air dusters by inhaling is deadly, misusing air dusters in other ways can actually teach us a lot about how cryogenic fluids cool things off. Now when you totally disregard all manufacturer warnings not to dispense the can upside down, you see these awesome clouds that form as a liquid coming out instantly condenses and freezes all of the water vapor nearby. But why does this liquid cool off and freeze all of these things? Like I said before, this liquid difluoroethane will boil and evaporate at room temperature. And as this liquid evaporates, it carries the heat from the liquid and all of its surroundings with it, rapidly cooling off in the same way that all cryogenic fluids, just like liquid nitrogen, do. Now using this liquid, we can do a lot of the same fun experiments that we do with liquid nitrogen, like creating these huge clouds of water vapor. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.